Hey there folks, this is Damien with Southpaw Designs and welcome to my first official build video. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to create this bourbon barrel shelf made from an actual bourbon barrel. This one actually came from Heaven Hill. Now, if you'd like to know more about what bourbon barrels actually are and where they come from, I have another video that you can watch that actually explains the process a little bit. Uh, first off, where can you find bourbon barrels? I live in central Kentucky, right in the heart of bourbon country, so bourbon barrels are fairly common in my area. They can only be used one time for bourbon, uh, but then many times they're used to age other types of whiskeys, wines, beers, especially in microbreweries. Brewery. Brewery. So they can be fairly easy to come by in the general area. Now, depending on where you are, bourbon barrels and bourbon barrel lids may be a little bit tougher to come by, at least genuine ones, which is what this is. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the video that I recorded has actually been sitting on my phone for about seven months. If you've subscribed to this channel, you might know that I've been woodworking for a little bit over a year. I started in the summer of 21 and just kind of dabbled through the fall and winter. The video that you're about to watch really represents one of my first projects. I didn't have many tools to work with at the time. If you watched my shop tour, uh, you'll probably notice that the tools have come quite a long way. And it also represented one of my first projects. So while my methods might have been a little clunky, the general um, the general step-by-step -step process uh, I'll use again and again and again. So if you enjoy this video, I would really appreciate a subscription, like, comment below. That really helps me to get this uh, channel out there more, and uh, the algorithm really loves it. We want to give that algorithm some sweet, sweet loving. All right, so now, on with the show. The first step in disassembling the barrel is removing the metal bands. Oftentimes, you can use a mallet and screwdriver to loosen them, but these wouldn't budge. So I got out the big guns and used the angle grinder. Not a problem though, as I'll need to cut these bands into smaller pieces later anyway. It's always scary when they pop. Once we have the barrel in hand, it's time to get dirty. I'm not going to lie, this part isn't as fun as it looks. Bourbon is aged in charred white oak barrels, and it's the char that gives bourbon its distinctive taste and the same char that gives bourbon barrel decor its rustic look. But we still need to remove the loose char until only the black color remains. The next step is taking the boards apart, just so we can glue them back up. Those barrel lids are well jointed, and as tight as those joints are, the further evaporation of the barrel in those barrels will cause the joints to loosen over time. Even though white oak is incredibly hard wood, we have to be careful not to dent or chip it, so be careful when working these loose. Then comes the glue up. This was probably the hardest part of the entire project. We all know how to do a glue up, but re-gluing those tight joints that I just separated and getting them as tight as they had been before is really quite the chore. At the time that I completed this project, about six months ago, I only had a few F-style clamps and very little experience with woodworking, so you'll probably notice how clumsy I look. Once it's dry, then comes the sanding. Some people hate it, but I find it pretty therapeutic. Some customers may want you to keep the distressed look, but my customer wanted it to look clean, so I sanded it to 80 and 120. That cleans it up, but still keeps it looking a little bit rustic. I spray one coat of lacquer on the char, just to seal it up and keep my hands from getting dirty. Then we need to clean up the metal band that will serve as the rail. While there will still be some imperfections, you want to remove any rust. Now it's time for our cut. You can cut it to any size that you like based on your needs. A larger base will hold more bottles, but leaves less of a back for decoration. 
I chose to cut the base to be about 40% of the lid. I mark it with a marking knife, then cut. I mistakenly lost the footage of the actual cut, but I used my table saw to both cut uh, the lid and to cut a rabbit into the back that's the same thickness as our lid. That will give us a flat surface to join our base to. In the future, I'll probably use my router, but at the time I didn't have one. Then we join the back and base. We'll push dowels to the back and into the base, which will give us a tight fit as well as helping to assure us that the base doesn't come loose from the back. Leave about a quarter of an inch sticking out of the back. We'll secure this to the wall with the French cleat, which will cause the top to sit about a quarter of an inch away from the wall. So these dowels will actually hold the shelf parallel to the wall. When we actually join it together, we'll want to make sure that it's really 90 degrees. The best tool for this would be right angle clamps, but at the time that I made this, I didn't have any. So I used my speed square, then rigged up my F clamps to hold it in a 90 degree angle until dry. I won't show you that. It's kind of embarrassing, but you get the idea. And we have ourselves a shelf. But let's use that metal band to both strengthen it as well as give it a bit more character. We'll use a piece of the stave to hold the band into place and align the lip of the stave to the base, then use a dowel to connect it. There's not enough wood there to safely and securely glue it, so the dowel will help to hold it in place. Now, I know, I got excited, and I went ahead and stained it. In my next build, I won't do that because I did have to clean up some imperfections when I was putting the last pieces together. Since the metal band actually sits at a bit of an angle, I cut the stave at an angle so that the band will sit flat. Then I use my angle grinder to cut a small perforation in the band, making it easier to bend. Then I screw it on with some rustic screws that I found on Amazon. Clean up the bands with a file to dull any sharp edges, and then you're done. And once it's finished, I use polyurethane to seal it, and then put a French cleat on the back. That actually works really well to hold it, and it holds a lot of weight. If you actually use this uh, as a shelf, especially for bottles, which could be full and could be heavy, that French cleat is going to give you some more of the security in, uh, that you need. Now, the build video that you just watched is not this actual shelf. This is actually the very first shelf that I built, and this is one that I keep in my house. It's not perfect. It's got a couple of things that I would have done differently. In fact, I did do them differently in the build video that you just watched. But you get to see what the finished product looks like, and I'm very happy with it. So again, thank you for watching till the end, and I would appreciate some comments, subscriptions, and likes in the uh, comments section below. Thank you, and bye-bye.